Mariah Carey doing fantasy right here on Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Certainly am on this side of the fence. I'm going to be going out with a great song, by the way. Someone, I think, uh, had asked me to play this a while back, but if not, it's truly truly one of my favorite bands from when I was younger. Uh, Oddly, though, every single song they sing seems to be, or at least the popular ones, seem to be about breakups. (laughs) So Anyway, kind of funny. This is the one song that's probably not. Anyway, Thought Transmissions of Sexual Energy. Interesting concept. I've kind of, I don't mean this to sound even remotely weird, but I've been on both sides of this energetics, and I've seen it good and seen it bad on both sides as well. So it's kind of interesting how this plays out. And really, to do a quick uh, overview on thought transmission, for those that are maybe newer to the concept, thought transmission, anytime you think of another person, instantly you create what I like to call a thought bridge to them. You instantly create a fiber optic network between you and that individual, and whatever you are feeling, they will feel. Sometimes they can pick up on thoughts, but for the most part, the thoughts they're going to pick up on are going to come from how you are feeling, because maybe you might feel angry, so they might pick up on thoughts of that anger, and then possibly you, and then be like, oh, she's still mad about such and such, or maybe you're sending them love, and you're just having a very profound, strong, loving, connective moment with them, and you'll pop into their head, and they'll feel lovey, and glowy, and warm, and awesome. They may not know why, they might know why, I don't know. That's, uh, that's up to them. There's no guarantees on how receptive others are. Uh, we're working on ourselves. You can't really work on others as much as many of us want to. You can't. So stop trying. There you go. It'll be a lot easier that way. Work on yourself. Make things change there, and you'll change your world, including the way others either seem, the way others are, or the way you feel about others. That will change when you change yourself. So thought transmissions, when you think of someone, you're transmitting how you feel to them. How do I do that, do you ask? Well, of course, it's a great question. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. You think of them. That's it. Done. Oh, it's not tough. You don't go and rub sticks together. You don't get a silver pen and a red pen and go, ah, and that makes it happen. No. Just think of them. Think of them. It's not even their name. You can say Sadie, but what Sadie are you talking about? I don't really know any Sadie, so when I say Sadie, there's no... There's a dog I know named Sadie, right? She's probably thinking of me right now going, who the hell is this? So again, no one, uh, or I'm sorry, they don't really necessarily, they pick up on who you're talking about, who you're thinking, who you're feeling and all that stuff. That's kind of how thought transmissions work. So how does this play out? Well, back when I was reading, and this is eons ago, I was reading a book called Celestine Prophecies. And there was a really powerful moment in there where this guy was looking at one of the women and they were all kind of a little more on the sensitive side. And it was a, a great book. The first Celestine Prophecies was a great book about the way energy dynamics work, the way thought transmissions basically work. When you think of someone, your energy goes to them and the way it feels is what hits them, right? So if they're extremely sensitive, they're going to feel that uh, with a larger sense of accuracy, right? And what tends to happen in those cases as Depending on what you're feeling, you can make them feel uncomfortable or you can make them feel comfortable or whatever. But in the case of the book, one of the first examples of it, he was kind of having ah, a little more on the romantic side thoughts of this young lady. She was a very attractive woman, supposedly. All right. I don't know. It's a book. I didn't see a picture of her. I'm assuming she is. And he was thinking of her in such a way. And she could feel that and was so sensitive to it and was not attracted to him was not even interested in him. In fact, I don't believe they ever got intimate in the book, ever. It wasn't like a blooming love story. It was a, no, don't do that. And then they became friends, I think. But the energy being sent to her from him was of a sexual nature. And she was not comfortable with that. And it actually pushed him away from her. Like she intentionally pushed him away from her feeling uncomfortable and aware of the fact she felt uncomfortable. I don't recall that she felt like she knew why, but she felt uncomfortable from him because that was the energy he was sending. So what my point is, and why I really think it's a neat thing to bring up and a neat way to look at this, is there is, <coughs> excuse me, there is sexual energy that exists between people, obviously, right? So sometimes there might be people that you've been uh, sexually attracted to, maybe physically attracted to, maybe maybe they're physically attractive, and then on top of that, there's something they've done that's created the story, and this is somehow the perfect man, or uh, in, the, in the case of a guy, like, you know, she's very beautiful, and my, oh my God, she's just super fun to hang out with, like she's a best friend, she's like one of the guys, right? And then you're like, oh, this is amazing, 
right? We have these scenarios where we meet people that just we kind of fall in love with. They may not know we feel that way about them, or they might. But what can happen in some of the energy dynamics that some of us will fall into, I'm going to break it into four quick ones real quick. Uh, we can fantasize about them, and they might be receptive to it. One type. We can fantasize about them, and they might not be receptive to it, meaning they're not interested in us in that way, and that sort of feeling makes them feel yucky, and they don't necessarily know why, but they are definitely not interested in us in any sort of romantic kind of way. Then there is someone that thinks about you in a romantic way, and you're interested, or there's someone that thinks about you in a romantic way, and you're not interested, okay? So of these four scenarios, essentially all the same concepts are coming out of play or coming into play, I should say. We're having these thoughts about someone. So we're thinking of them, creating the thought bridge instantly. Now we're transmitting how we feel. And so we go into some sort of act of creating a feeling within ourselves that is probably very strong in love, but also of that um, uh, physical kind of nature. And I'm thinking more maybe if we're imagining being with someone fantasizing might be another word to use where I'm not just totally trying to run down this and make it an X-rated uh, show, but that is a level of energy, sexual energy. And I'm not talking Kundalini or any of that. Cause that's a very cool concept too. That's about, you know, refining that a lot more than just so much the way sexual energy in general is cast about. Yes. There are going to be some people that say you should not cast your seed wildly, right? All that. I got you. I'm not debating whether it's morally right or wrong to fantasize, I love doing it. So, you know, wherever, <laughs> wherever you fall on that, yeah, it's good times. But you can send energy to someone. They might not feel that way about you. And if you are fantasizing about them, that can create a sort of negative scenario for them. And so if you're well aware of the fact that the person that you're uh, interested in is definitely not interested in you in that way. Maybe they've said, maybe there's some maybe we've crossed a line, maybe there's some sort of weirdness. I don't know. I don't I don't really know what scenarios it falls into. I'm a guy, so it's like really hard to get to that place with me per se. I may not be interested in walking down that road with you, but I'm certainly not going to be bothered by the fact that you're attracted to me like that, right? That's not going to bother me. But I think with women, I think it could very well be a very different story. And the fact that men are kind of big and a little more scary and like, right, there's a whole at component to it that I'm not as aware of um, because I'm I'm a guy versus the woman that has to deal with the bigger guy, stronger guy, right? Like bigger, taller, all that crazy stuff. But when you have a good situation with someone, so this is kind of for the for the larger portion of my audience, I hope, if you have a good relationship with someone, if you're interested. If you are uh, in a loving kind of relationship, maybe you're not together yet. Maybe you, you haven't gotten through a couple of the hurdles. Maybe you're talking a little bit, but you know, it's maybe flirty from time to time. Maybe there's some sort of extra energy there that you've picked up on. This is a great way to enhance the energy exchange between you. I have had this be extremely <laughs> successful in my life. Uh, and I don't mean necessarily just having sex with people, because it's not that so much, but creating interesting relationships, creating interesting first dates, uh, creating some very interesting scenarios through this energy exchange. And like I've said, I've been on the receiving end of it, both good and bad. Uh, and uh, being a guy, I guess, I'm assuming it's slightly different, maybe. I don't know, because I don't know what it's like to be a woman, or at least I don't remember. Uh, but from the standpoint of liking it, oh, it creates this incredible, like, I think it affects me even physiologically, if you know what I mean. Like, it affects me. Like, if I'm feeling it with someone that I really care about and that hits me and that connection, and it's happened to me a few times, and it's just like, wow, um, incredible, very powerful, makes me think of them in a very awesome, wonderful, beautiful way. And I've also had uh, situations where uh, it's been with people that maybe I'm not as interested in, uh, and it it's different. It's just, uh, you know, I, I don't... Uh, I'm not interested like that, right? It doesn't make me sick, doesn't make a queasy, it's just, nah. And I, I think it kind of causes me to like, yeah, I don't know if I want, if I feel comfortable like being alone with you kind of thing. Like, I don't know where this is going to go if, I, if we do. So these are the things that you kind of want to keep uh, in mind, but this level of energy that is, uh, is, is, is moved to the other individual is very powerful. So I just thought I would do a different show on thought transmissions, but kind of from this sexual 
uh, energy kind of way because it is a very profound and super part of relationships. Uh, you know, hopefully at least in the Western world, I, I, you know, maybe there's other places where religions are strange or something that I don't understand that maybe sex isn't allowed to be enjoyed or something. I don't know, <laughs> but for all the people that are allowed to enjoy it, whew, it's awesome. Um, that being, if you're a child and have never experienced it, it's horrible. Don't ever do it. It's horrible. <laughs> but that being said, uh, these things were great. And when you finally open up to these kinds of energies with others, you will start to notice it will inspire dreams. You'll start having really cool dreams from time to time. You're going to have daydreams, certainly, from time to time. And again, it'll enhance your fantasies because you get that interesting sexual energetic transmission going on. And sometimes it's received very wonderfully on the other side. And that is an exceptionally powerful set because love is in there and that physical mm, kind of yummy energy mm -hmm, you know what i'm saying that's all in there and it makes it simply delicious i'm just saying we're going out with a great song by the band 38 special it's called fantasy girl it's right here on dan radio style 